डियर स्टूडेंट्स माई सेल्फ खिलेश कुमार असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर इन इंग्लिश एंड यू नो दिस इज योर इंग्लिश लिटरेचर सेशन इन आवर प्रीवियस वीडियो वी हैव स्टडीड अबाउट पी पी सैलीज पॉइम और टू द वेस्ट विंड and now today we are going to study about the remaining part of the poem that was our part first and this is our part second of the poem or to the west winds the remaining part so we have studied that or to the west winds was composed by pp sally and uh, we have taken a look on the introduction to the poet pp sally pp sally romantic poet and uh, visionary poet he was a great lyric philosophical poet so this is the introduction to the poet and uh, now let's start the remaining part of the west wind or to the west wind we have read about the beginning of the poem that uh, pb sally was composed sorry the west wind was composed by pb sally in in 1819 and the poem was published in 1820 in the collection of prometheus and bound and in the poem we see that poet is very connected to the power of nature and the poem is addressed to the west wind so in the poem the poet directly speaks about the west wind west wind is a very uh, powerful natural object and has a dual power destroyer as well as preserver in the beginning of the poem we see that uh, the west wind destroy the dead leaves and these are the living seeds and the living seeds will be converted into flowering plants in future time and clouds in the sky can be also taken away by the power of the west wind so now the remaining part the mediterranean see the mediterranean sea is awoken by the west wind so mediterranean mediterranean sea is also awoken by the west wind the west wind has a great power in itself the poet compares the spring to a shepherd the poet compares the spring spring season to a shepherd just as a shepherd takes his flock of sheep similarly what does a shepherd do a shepherd takes his flock of sheep similarly the spring dries the seeds and the spring will fill the valleys and hills with buds and flowers which have beautiful colors and smells so shepherd can take his flock of seed and the spring can take the seeds and after 
preserving the seeds spring will fill the valleys and fill hills with buds and flowers which have beautiful colors and smells so this all happens this all happen because of west wind because of the power of nature so nature has a very great power in this way the poet presents the power of west wind or the power of nature so power is sorry nature is supreme the poem is in the form of a prayer to the west wind so in the poem we see the poet prays to the west wind the poet requests the west wind to inspire his spirit also because west wind has a power so the poet requests the west wind that by the power of west wind he should be inspired and or we can say to inspire his spirit also he requests how to grant him strength and liberty so the poet adjust to the west wind to grant him strength and liberty also next in the last stanza of the poem or to the west wind we find an inspiring message of hope inspiring message of hope the poet makes a connection between himself and west wind he presents his childhood and boyhood memory so in the last stanza of the poem we see that poet gives a message of hope to this universe and he presents the memories of his boyhood when he was young when he was a boy and as a boy he was as swift proud and uncontrollable as the west wind as a boy in his past time when he was a boy he was swift proud and uncontrollable just as the west wind is also swift proud and uncontrollable so yes next and he appeals the poet appeals to the west wind to spread his thoughts in the world the poet appeals to the west wind to spread his thoughts in the world so that the birth of a new era will be created by his thoughts so the poet presents a picture uh, regarding his boyhood that he was very swift proud and uncontrollable in his boyhood and uh, now uh, he is not swift proud and uncontrollable like the west wind so he prays to the west wind to make him swift proud and uncontrollable and he also wants to the west wind that west wind 
should make his thought in a circulated area that's why the walls can get the theory the thought of the poet and by the thoughts of the poet a new era will be created next and just as autumn autumn is the name of a season you know there are four seasons prescribed in english literature autumn first one of autumn second one winter third one spring and fourth one autumn winter spring and summer so these are four seasons autumn winter spring and summer so in the last stanza we see that just as autumn is followed by winter season and winter is followed by spring season similarly this era of evils and miseries will be followed by the era of happiness love and beauty so the poet wants that evils and miseries should be followed by the happiness love and beauty if uh, winter comes can spring be far behind so the line suggests us regarding this thought that this era of evils and miseries will be followed by the era of happiness love and beauty just as autumn is followed by winter and winter is followed by spring this is the cycle and through this cycle we will get the era of happiness love full of love and full of beauty and at the end of the poem we find the optimistic attitude of sally optimistic attitude of sally because dark side will be followed by the bright side sorrow and sufferings pains obstacles prevailed in the world will be followed by peace love happiness so in this poem we see that the poet mentions about the power of west wind and at the end of the poem we see the optimistic attitude of sally regarding hope so this is your ode to the west winds so like share and subscribe this youtube channel and click on bell icon so that you can get all the notifications so thank you so much